after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Let's pray. Father, we just pause right now to say we open our hearts and our minds to your word. We know that we are shaped by our culture. We're shaped by our background, by our own preferences and experiences. But Father, we lay all that at your feet and we ask that Holy Spirit, you and the word of God would shape us and conform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ tonight. And we thank you for your power that's here to bring us from where we are to where you want us to be. And I thank you, Lord, that you are gentle, that you love us, that you're on our side, that you are for us and not against us, that you are here as an encouragement and one called alongside of us to be our helper. Lord, whether we're facing times of trouble or, or difficulty, Lord, you are here to encourage us and to speak to us through your word. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. How many of you like to, to run? Are there any runners here? Okay. Um, I never used to like to run. I mean, running was really hard for me. But part of the reason why is because I was running for different reasons. Sometimes I would run to try to get into shape. I can remember uh, when I was playing basketball that we'd have to run cross country to get in shape for basketball season. Uh, there was sometimes I would, I would run to... Uh, to lose weight, I would I would run because a friend was running, and and it wasn't until I I passed 40 that I started to think about my little daughter who's nine years old. And I started to think, you know what? I want to be around for her graduation. I want to walk her down the aisle. I want to be around for my grandkids. And so I started to run again, but this time I ran for a whole different reason. It wasn't for being in shape. It was for this little girl and for my wife and for my family. And that's why I get out there and I run now in the cold, in the rain, and I enjoy it because the goal of running has changed for me. And that's why I'm able to run when before I would start and I would you know, stop and it was never consistent. And so we all run. That's what, that's what Paul said. Don't you know that everyone in a race, all the runners run? And every one of us are running, and that's why some of you are here and you're tired, is because you've been running all week long. You've been running to classes, you've been working, you've been trying to get projects done, you've been trying to get your laundry done and, and feed yourself and just take care of life, and you come in and you're tired, and we're all running. We come from, from Bangladesh, and every four years we come back, and there's something new, like you know, something, some new express lane or drive through or, you know, there's some fast track or high speed something technology that we're not used to. Everybody else is. And, you know, we're kind of there like, you know, we, we don't know how to use the card, where to swipe it, what to punch, uh, how to use technology because we're over there, you know, in some uh, village and we don't have those things. And people are, are behind us being impatient with us because everybody is on the run. Everybody's racing after something. But as believers, we are not just to run, but we're to run in such a way. Okay, that's not me spitting, by the way. That's the sound coming from the sound system. Okay, just ignore it. But look how many times Paul talks about winning. Okay? Verse 19, to win. 20, twice he talks about winning. Verse 21, to win. 22, to win the week. 24, to get the prize. 25, to get a crown. 27, he talks about a prize. And so what he's trying to say over and over again is everybody's running, but not everybody gets the prize. There it's possible to run and not get the prize. But what's the prize he's talking about? He's not talking about heaven. Okay, this is not a passage about there's Christians that run for Jesus and there's others that run after their own thing and only those that run for Jesus get to go to heaven. That's true, but that's not what he's saying. Because he's saying run in such a way to get the prize. And he talks about, I want to press on towards the prize for which Christ has called me heavenward. And Paul was already a believer. There was not a question whether he was going to you know, uh, fall away or not. But there was a prize that he was talking about. And this is what I want to talk to you about tonight. Is making sure that you get the prize. As I was praying for this service, I could have shared a lot of things. And I, and I went before the Lord, and, and this is what the Holy Spirit kept saying to me, to speak to you tonight, is tell them to go after the prize. Go after the prize. Go after the prize. So what is this prize that Paul is striving after 
and telling us to go after. If we don't know it, we will miss the whole plan and purpose of the race. We're trying to teach Emma French. She was learning Bengali, which is the language uh, that we spoke in Bangladesh, and now she's having to switch and learn French, and she's kind of resisting it. So she's not all that you know, motivated to learn French. So we got her this program for kids, and I told her, I said, Emma, every time you reach a milestone in this language program, you're gonna get a prize. <laughs> and the first thing she asked was, what's the prize? It wasn't enough just to know she's gonna get a prize, she wanted to know what kind of prize. Because she was trying to determine whether or not the prize was good enough to put in the effort that we were asking her to put in. And so she wouldn't do it until she knew what the prize was. And that's a great question. Because to fail to identify the prize is to potentially waste a life. When we come home, sometimes we'll be talking to somebody, a friend, and we'll, we'll, we'll refer to somebody, if, uh, their <coughs> daughter or son or... And we'll say, how are they doing? And I can't tell you how many times a parent has said, or a relative has said, you know what? They're doing great. They just bought their first house. And, you know, we always kind of scratch our head because that is not what we were asking. We weren't asking how they're doing financially. But when we asked how are they doing, the, the, the test, the litmus test of how they were doing great or not happened to do with whether they were you know, had a house and bought a house and how their career was going and what kind of car they were driving or whatever or what their kids were into. And what we were really, we, maybe we didn't explain it good enough. We were saying how they doing in their heart, in their life, how they doing with God, how's, how's their spiritual life doing? Are they walking in joy and, and blessing? And, but, but, you know, we were talking two different languages. But that was what we meant. Paul was mortified at the thought of missing his assigned purpose in life. He said, I press on to lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me. Now, Paul wrote this from jail. He wrote it at the end of his ministry and toward the end of his life. And here was this old man who already planted churches up and down uh, the world the, the civilized world, and, the, and, and at that point, he'd already done so much for God, and he still, from jail, was saying, I want to be sure I don't miss laying hold of the prize, the purpose for which Jesus got a hold of my life. I press on to that. And Paul was consumed. He was consumed by the quality of the prize he was pursuing. And he wanted to make sure that it matched the desire and expectation of the master. A lot like when there's a, an athlete who is sent, uh, maybe to a, like someone was going to a wrestling match over here tonight. <coughs> and maybe there's a star wrestler who is expected to take uh, their match because they're the best in their weight class. And they're sent and everybody's expecting them to do well. Or maybe someone is expected to win a gold medal in the Olympics. An athlete favored for gold is driven to fulfill the expectations of the fans who are watching. And you know what? I want to tell you tonight, you and I were destined for gold. We were destined to get the prize that was already ordained for us. And in Hebrews chapter 12, he brings out those, uh, the game's imagery again. The writer there says, run the race marked out for you. So we're running a race we're running to get the prize, and it's a race that nobody else can run, but it's run, it's, it's been de destined and designed for you and me. When, um, when Daylene was growing up, you know, like, like I said, at eight years old, she knew that she was supposed to be a missionary to Bangladesh. And yet she was taking uh, AP courses in high school. She was, you know, in all these advanced, you know, honor, project potential, you know, you name it. And uh, her teachers would always find, end up finding out, because she'd write on a project or something, that she was planning to be a missionary to Bangladesh. And they would say things to her like, why are you going to waste your life? They would look at her being a missionary, and they would say, you could be a lawyer. Which she could, because she wins every one of our arguments. She could have been anything she wanted to, and they thought choosing to go over to some, in their estimation, God-forsaken place, 